Lord Lieutenant, Mr Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for coming to this occasion. We all feel very honoured to receive this plaque, though of course it is really my father to whom the honour begin belongs. Um, I'd like to read a short message first from my sister Scylla, who is unable to, to be here. She says, I'm sorry not to be here for the unveiling of this plaque to celebrate the birth of my father, Roger Lanson Green, writer, scholar and storyteller. His impressive oeuvre has brought pleasure to millions, introduced people to worlds which would otherwise have remained unknown and illuminated the works of other writers, and I am one of them, and one of the most grateful. I am proud to be Roger Lanceling Green's daughter and delighted that this plaque should be here on the house which meant so much to him and to all the family and where so many of his works were written. I also have uh, a little message from the owner of Blackwell's Bookshop, which is sort of de facto university bookshop. Um, uh, Roger Lanson Green is one of those legendary writers who one remembers from childhood and whose books will still sell well today. Both his many stories and retellings of myths and his biographies continue to be requested regularly and to sell and indeed to be discovered by new generations. Here at Blackwell's in Oxford, we are lucky to be selling books in a city which has such a fertile literary heritage, and Roger Lanceling Green is certainly one of those bright stars in Oxford's literary firmament. Out of his many books, those which do especially well are The Adventures of Robin Hood, King Arthur and his knights, and the biography of C.S. Lewis. In fact, these books that have been on our shelves and, and have been selling since they were first published. <coughs> they are still selling from our shelves today. Mm. Blackwell's is delighted that Roger Lanceling Green is being honoured with a blue plaque. Mm. It is a fitting tribute to a writer who has contributed so much to the lives of so many readers. Rebecca McAllister, manager, Blackwell's Oxford. Oh. Now, I won't uh, repeat the information in the brochure which we have, uh, which we'll issue with you with in a moment. But I feel we should draw attention to the very deep affection, indeed love for Poulton, that my father had. This is evidenced by his poem, which we've included in the brochure. It must be very hard to understand, especially for anybody who has ever moved house, how the continuous occupation of, in our case, some 34 generations of the family affected him and us. Uh, we have managed to, to survive through thick and thin, through civil and world wars, through the Black Death, through pandemics and plagues, and somehow or other are still here to maintain these increasingly ancient buildings. This, our newest house on the site, a listed building and member of historic houses, is not quite 400 years old, but in the nether regions, parts of it are not, not only some 700 <coughs> years old, but are built from stones that were quarried and masoned a thousand years ago. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm delighted to introduce Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant from Merseyside, Mr. Mark Bumble, who will give us some recollections. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, uh, June, Caroline, and ladies and gents. I've known uh, the Lanceling Green family all my life. I remember Roger as a distant figure during my childhood and knew, he knew and was impressed by his reputation as a children's author. We had his books at home and I recall my mother reading to us the tales of the Greek heroes and of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. The Green family were and are lovers of literature and drama and there were always events at Poulton Hall 
including the memorable and magical plays in the garden, of which I'm sure most of you here have attended uh, at one time or another. My father, who's here today, was Roger's solicitor. And later, when I became a solicitor myself, I advised the family for a period. So in those days, I was a regular visitor. And since then, I have seen a lot of the irrepressible June. Uh, flaming June, I might call her, <laughs> with an apology to Frederick Layton. She is always out and about, involving herself in so many, many activities. She has been a wonderful supporter of my own children's charity, Chet, and of our concert series at Crosby Hall. So, I am particularly delighted to be here as Lord Lieutenant of Merseyside to witness the unveiling of this much deserved plaque by the Mayor of Wirral. Thank you. Uh, now I think Peter Bolt is going to say a few words about the, um, the blue plaque system. <laughs> Mayor, uh, June, Lord Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. <laughs> My name is Peter Bold from Conservation Areas Wirral. We're a volunteering group and also known as CORE. Over the last three years, CORE have partnered Wirral Council to put in place a rolling programme of blue plaques, some of which have been supported by the Wirral Heritage Fund. Wirral has an abundance of rich heritage with people that are both well known and not so well known. From the 13 plaques that have been installed since the beginning of the programme, we've tried to vary our selection of recipients. We've therefore included Victorian architects, war heroes, not forgetting one or two intrepid adventurers and sportsmen to the, the collection, which in which include. Now the first one, was nearly three years ago, was Dixie Dean, the first footballer, footballer to have scored 60 goals in one season with Everton Football Club. And this record still stands today, and this is installed at his first professional club, Tramere Rovers. I will mention Anne Davison, the first lady to sail single-handed across the Atlantic in a small sailing boat. The plaque is installed very near to here at Meerbrook House near Raby where she lived for a period of her life. And I much, must mention Alan Rouse from Wallasey, the first climber to summit K2, the second highest mountain in the world and this plaque is installed at Breck Park in Wallasey where he first learned to climb as a young teenager. Today we are commemorating Roger Lansling Green, a prolific writer and children's storyteller, and it is hoped that the publicity generated today will make him even more of a household name. Although all the blue plaques um, and their recipients were very different, they all have something in common. They were exceptional people who all made a real <coughs> difference during their lifetime. But thanks to Jew, only one of these has been unveiled on what would have been their hundredth birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Mr. Mayor, may I invite you to unveil the plan? <laughs> First of all, Lord Lieutenant, June, members of the family, ladies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me and the Mayoress to Poulton Hall, Wirral's most historic family home. The Lancelins and Greens have lived here for very nearly a thousand years, and during that time have done such things as founding St Andrew's Church in Bebbington, in the 11th century, Godstow Priory, Oxfordshire in the 12th century, and endowing the first free school in this area in the 17th, and of course many other things besides. However, no member of the family throughout those thousand years, and no other Wirral author, 
has ever before reached and influenced so many millions of people throughout the English-speaking world, and now in translation throughout the Spanish, Russian, Chinese, Polish and other nations in the way that Roger Lanston Green has done and continues to do. Through the history of literature, a sense of place has always been important, and just as Lakeland inspired Beatrix Potter and the Yorkshire Moors, the Bronte sisters, thus also did Poulton with the family's castle and the church from Norman times, and this landscape, which research by rural archaeology and others indicates to be the site of the even more ancient battle of Brunborough. This place gave Roger his love of Arthurian legends and of the mythologies of many lands on which he worked with such scholarship and care in this house for some 40 years. As Mayor of Wirral, it therefore gives me great pleasure to unveil this plaque in his memory on this, on this his historic house and on this the centenary day of his birth. <laughs> Wirral Council, Roger Lanston Green, 1918-1987, writer, scholar, biographer, storyteller, member of the Oxford Linklings, lived and wrote here, Conservation Areas Wirral. <laughs> It would be in Roger's 100th birthday today, no, so that's why it's special, and you're all special. And I know Gerard's got lots of thanks to say, but it is a lovely good moment, and I'll let Gerard speak for the, all the thanks. All right. for performing this ceremony. Uh, before we set to on the buffet, uh, I'd like to say some special thank yous. Uh, firstly, to World Conservation for attending to the many and various practicalities surrounding the provision and the permissions for getting for the plaque. And especially to Peter Bolt um, for his many visits and work in getting the wording and production done in time for today. Uh, thanks also to Karen Vanner, who produced the booklet, which we shall hand out to you just in a moment, and who's worked long and hard to gather all the details therein, uh, as well as preparing guest lists and, and other things. Uh, and a big thank you also to Lawrence Holden and everyone at the Williamson. And this is a moment when I can mention that they are offering to host and help with a special exhibition of my father's work uh, in the coming year. Uh, and of course, special thanks to my mother, who masterminded and arranged the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and to no our archers, Graham Hicks yes. and Delon. Oh, yeah. 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 uh, uh, I'd like to invite the uh, Lord Lieutenant and the Mayor and Mayoress to lead the way to the book. So I'll, 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 I'll you. You. Well, I think I've done my part.